Good evening. My name is Steve Pereira, and you're watching Ben TV, and we're on a queer idea. And today we have with us Nick Anderson from the Les from Melbourne's Lesbian and Gay Archives. Welcome, Nick. Thank you very much. We need to talk about archiving. Yes. What are the Lesbian and Gay Archives? Gay and Lesbian Archives. Well, it's Lesbian and Gay, technically, is it? in okay. the context of a, the organisational name. Um, we started off as the Australian Gay Archives, became the Lesbian and Gay Archives. And uh, hope, well, who knows, in the, in the future our name may change again. But certainly the collection itself spans across all sexualities and genders. It does span across because in today's alphabet soup that is the lesbian and gay community, we need we're not GLBTIQ, etc. Has Absolutely. there been any pressure to change the name? Or? Uh, there has at various points in time. Um, certainly, I think part of the nature of the organisation is that we, we were established in 1978. So we came out of, I suppose, the latter part of the gay liberation movement, mm. in a sense, um, during a period of coalitionism, but during a period in which the word gay was uh, broadly synonymous with the community. Um, within the context of, of that uh, change and development through the 1980s, we changed our names um, early or midway through the 80s. Um, we've currently got a process that will be part of our AGM where we'll initiate a broader consultation process about that. Um, within our mission statement though, we certainly do highlight that we do cover um, <coughs> bisexual, transgender, or trans, you mm -hmm. know, in a broadly transvestite, transgender, uh, transsexual, um, intersex, brother boy and sister girl. So we do try to be a bit more explicit within the context of our kind of more descriptive statements. So, yeah. Underneath is all, you cover it all. We do indeed. You do indeed. So from your perspective, and why is it important still to archive gay and lesbian media material? Sure. What does it mean to the community? <coughs> Well, I think it, it means different things to different parts of the community. I think for a lot of younger people, they may not be necessarily familiar with a lot of the cultural aspects um, that have been really crucial to forming the nature of what our community is. Um, a lot of younger people who are coming out now, um, you know, kids going through school, um, they may have a broad awareness of, um, I suppose, uh, some cultural icons or some communications, but, you know, I suppose as many people would be aware, um, things like uh, bars, clubs, uh, a lot of the older organisations uh, no longer exist, you know, to get a bit of a sense of what that was for different people in, in different time periods, um, you know, you do need the material of that to, to display and, and certainly sometimes there's not that material. Absolutely. If you go back far enough uh, or if you go back prior to a lot of the organisations being uh, extant, um, uh, you know, you really need oral history uh, to, to go back to a certain extent. Or if you go back prior to that, you need to look in court and police records or you need to infer, you need to look at the gaps that are in uh, mm. some of the archival records. So it can be quite complex. Why would you impress upon somebody today to understand where we came from? What's your perspective on that? Well, I think, you know, there's a really good example now looking at a lot of it, the issues associated with uh, same-sex marriage or marriage equality mm. movement. Um, <clears throat> There's a lot of pushback at the moment. There's a lot of backlash uh, from conservatives and, and certainly largely Christian conservatives. And that is only increasing in, in animosity. And a lot of people both aren't aware that there is a long history of uh, struggle, um, both for the legal rights, but also um, just for existing in many ways. And to understand where we've come from in that gives people strength and gives mm. people confidence uh, and also gives people tools to uh, help and change things for the future. Um, it can be a bit demoralising for young people these days, <clears throat> whether or not it's an education minister saying, you know, you're not allowed to show that film. Um, you know, they had the same arguments when in Melbourne back in 1974-75 when uh, Barb Creed's Homosexuality, a film for discussion, was mm. being shown in schools. Um, and so that was part of Gay Liberation, um, Gay Liberation Melbourne. So that was developed and that was shown within schools as part of an education process. And there was the same uh, backlash and, and outcry as people were moving towards decriminalisation. But at that point, people were still being uh, charged, um, you know, in their hundreds for, for you know, doing but, what seems normal these days. Absolutely. But, be, but being familiar with the history and the culture, are you, do you sometimes feel the sense of despair that we sometimes seem to be going backwards? Like number 96 of the television series, which sure. is in your archive. Yes. We've do you think copies. number 96 would be produced today? Um, I think it is. 
and in, in different ways though. Mm. If you look, I mean, there's certainly gay characters on, mm. um, you know, Neighbours, there's gay characters on a lot of the main, mainstream soaps and, and that's really essentially what Number 96 was. Mm. Number 96 was highly unusual for its time, both in Australia and internationally, uh, for the positive uh, characterisation of, of, gay, of a gay male. Mm. Um, you know, there was certainly a lot of negative uh, uh, I suppose, characters that were being um, pushed out through various channels during the 70s. Um, you know, there's also a lot of web series, um, but you've got, a, you've got a lot of individuals in, in many different cultural fields, whether or not it's TV or film, uh, web series, um, you know, now that, that can uh, provide those role models, can provide that kind of reflection on society that people look to within the context of number 96. But it does raise the issue now that there is such a plethora of gay and lesbian imagery around them. How do you start archiving that? When do you stop? Do you take everything in? What's, how do you prioritise what sure. you to archive? Hey, look, it is really hard. Um, you know, we have to acknowledge that we're mm. an all-volunteer organisation mm. and we have some amazing volunteers, you know. A lot of individuals who have volunteered, um, you know, basically since 1978 and they're still there. Um, you know, our founder is still our ongoing periodical secretary and ensures that we have a, a vast collection mm -hmm. of, of serials or community newsletters. Uh, newspapers, but and we have many others who have been involved for such a long time. But there's certainly a lot of a lot of different forms of media that are much harder to um, Which collect is going these to be days. Other, other question is technology yeah. as well, because yes. online and everything else now. And yeah. a lot of that does. We we work in different ways. So if you're looking at things like say websites. Um, uh, which is where a lot of, you know, things like blogs, um, things like um, different, say, uh, media communication company websites. We have a good relationship with the Pandora project. So Pandora is, um, it's, a, it's an acronym, um, but essentially it's preservation of, of digital, of websites. Mm -hmm. um, it also uh, functions for pre preserving um, online uh, newsletters and emails mm. and things like that. Well, not quite the emails as such, but it allows for the preservation in that context. So we work with Pandora, which is managed by the National Library of Australia, uh, to work towards uh, archiving and capturing particular websites. Fantastic. We're running out of time. I just want... So it's a public archive. It is a library system that people can access? Uh, absolutely. How We're, do people get to it? Sure. Um, we, we have... Um, it's, uh, we're principally here for the community. We're here for and see ourselves as mm. part of the community. Um, we're accessed by a lot of different people. We principally um, on Thursdays, um, but Fridays and some other days. Physical location? Where? Uh, we're in South Yarra yep. um, at uh, 6 Claremont Street currently with the Victorian AIDS Council who very generously provides us free space. But you can also access, uh, access the archives online? Certain parts. Possibly. So we've got a lot of information about our collection online um, <clears throat> and you can find that at uh, alga.org.au. Do you want to repeat that once more? ALGA, okay. that's Australian Lesbian and Gay Archives, .org .au. Um, so you just send us an email um, when you can find the information on our website and we'll be able to help people out, what, you know, find what they're looking for. Fantastic. So. You've been watching Steve Pereira and Nick Henderson from the Gay and Lesbian Archive on Ben TV on A Queer Idea. Thank you for watching. We'll be back again.